because they are asking two questions. One, would you like an earlier connection date? Of which I think we agree, you know, everyone's going to say yes, or most people are going to say yes, please. And um, the second one is, would you be prepared to accept a non-firm connection? So some people might say, no, I'm absolutely not interested in that. I only want an earlier connection date if I can stay firm. Some people might say, well, ideally, I'd like an earlier connection date to be firm, but I'd accept an earlier connection date to be non-firm. So you're allowed to say both. I would be interested in both. Um, so it, it's a very straightforward form. Hello and welcome to the Connectology podcast. Here, Road Knight Taylor's influential team of elite connection specialists and their expert guests help you to better understand distribution and transmission network connections and how to acquire them faster, for less cost and at lower risk. Welcome to this emergency podcast, I'm going to call it, um, because we were just discussing this last week, which is, by the way, the subject of, of today is National Grid's Expressions of Interest, which is currently underway, about which I admit to being more than just the greatest layperson in the room, um, because I, I know next nothing about it. But last week I said to Catherine, blimey, this sounds like a thing, should we be doing a podcast? And she said, absolutely. So, which isn't always the answer. So, um, so we've got Catherine uh, Cleary, Nikki Pillinger, who are two of the four connectologists here at Road Knight Taylor. Catherine has an awful lot of transmission experience, and Nikki an awful lot of post-acceptance experience, and, and Nikki does exclusively post-acceptance, pretty much post-acceptance um, work here. So this is uh, sort of right up her street, and, and she's up to speed with what is a slightly murky picture. So I'm going to ask one of you, either of you, it's the way we roll, obviously, to pitch in and explain what this expression of interest is about and then the other one can um, maybe prepare during that time by thinking who it might be pertinent to because I think that's a pertinent question as little as I do know so who's who's going I'll, I'll go for the headlines here if you like thanks um, Catherine this is Catherine by the way <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, yeah the reason we thought this is worth talking about is um, it's it's very timely so National Grid have come out with it it's a call for expressions of interest uh, for this month so April uh, 2023 um, and it's building on um, the sort of announcements around the revision to construction planning assumptions and National Grid changing the way they model the background network, uh, batteries in particular on the network, uh, which we did a podcast about uh, a couple of months back. That's obviously created a huge amount of work for National Grid to go away and restudy the network, um, kind of you know, effectively sort of re-benchmark all of the existing contracted generators in the queue. I don't think we envied them, um, their work cut out for them sort of having to come out and, and write to every contracted customer. So this is their way of asking people to put their hands up if they've got a project where they really want an accelerated connection date. And effectively, that's, that's kind of as we see it that, that's effectively national grid finding a way to sort of prioritize projects which are ready to move forwards and you know and could really benefit from from this acceleration you know before they get to the, the big backlog of, of other schemes that potentially also need a need a contract update great thank you and you said april 2023 there there is obviously a a, a deadline for this expression of interest yes the, yeah deadline's 30th of april 30th of april okay great thank you very much nikki important question who should be listening? Who should be taking note? Um, well, I suppose anyone that has gone through the statement of works process um, and has got an, um, a connection date, which is go going out to 2037 at the moment. Obviously, they're, they're sort of quite variable. But anyone that's gone through that project progression process and has had a response from National Grid saying you have quite an extended connection date. So they're interested in hearing from distribution and transmission customers. Specifically, people who have a transmission constraint, if you have any sort of distribution reinforcement, then then this isn't relevant. But um, anyone who's got any enabling works on the transmission system that are going to cause them to not be able to connect for quite some time. And just because I know that the language around these things is is quite uh, sort of complicated. But when you say statement of works, I assume that includes the whole Appendix G process, project progressions and that whole piece? Yes. So as with lots of things in the industry, it's got lots of different names. Um, I try. I, I tend to actually call it the transmission works assessment process now because that kind of covers everything. Um, but yes, anyone who's gone through... Um, and so Appendix G Part 2 will not have a uh, constraint on connection date. 
neither will Appendix G Part 3 because they'll be covered by TA and M, but any Appendix G Part 4 or now Part 5 customers uh, will be covered by this. And actually, Catherine, I'll ask you in a, in a second to come back and just talk, talk about um, directly transmission connected projects. But just in terms of that, those distribution connected projects, um, for people who aren't particularly au fait with the Appendix G parts, um, which I am only vaguely, could you just kind of shed a little bit more light who, who, who's out there who has an accepted distribution connection offer should be thinking, I mustn't miss this deadline. I should at least look into this. Um, so anyone who's in Appendix G Part 4 or Part 5 uh, who's had their project progression result come back with a, with a defined connection date. Um, okay, so so this is anyone who's had a connection time frame impacted by distri- by transmission works. Would that yes. is that a, a, a sort of a safe low bar? Yeah. Okay, cool. Catherine, anything to add to that and then transmission directly transmission connected, please. It's kind of interesting because when this came out, I think we probably thought it was going to be only transmission connected projects and the ESA kind of quite quickly rolled back on that and clarified that they wanted to hear from distribution customers as well. So yeah, I suppose there are probably quite a few distribution customers, Nikki, who are maybe in a sort of slightly grey area where they they kind of know that they're going to be impacted by transmission constraints because people ahead of them in the queue have been, but they haven't yet been through the transmission impact assessment process. So, you know, you haven't got a, a variation letter yet that says your connection date's being delayed. You've just kind of heard the whisperings. And I suppose those people are potentially less likely to kind of benefit from this or, or this is this is slightly less relevant for, for those people potentially, do you think? Um I think it would be less relevant for them, but I'm not sure if you could just put in an expression of interest anyway. Obviously, if you haven't gone through that transmission works assessment process and you're going to be fairly um, sort of early on in your development process, what National Grid are really trying to understand is like current construction programs and whether milestones are are being met. So uh, in terms of those planning milestones, land milestones, and then obviously there's sort of detailed design and and everything that we do post-acceptance. Mm. And so I, they probably wouldn't be too interested in, in hearing from people who, who are that early on in the process. Yeah, and I think that matches what they said at, you know, for, for direct transmission connected customers as well. There are actually sort of three specific offerings on the table here. The three, the three things are bringing forward connection dates, full stop. Full stop. Bringing forward non-firm, like enabling access earlier based on a non-firm connection. That second one is primarily aimed at batteries. Yeah. Okay, and the third thing is that they could open out that that non-firm um, earlier connection date option to non-batteries, but 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 realistically non-batteries that are you know in a good in a good sort of position, having sort of kept on track with their appendix J or their construction milestones um, and are ready to build. So I guess like uh, they've been quite sort of explicit about kind of working their way through the you know that they're kind of interested in hearing about from batteries because I think there's a recognition that batteries are quite likely to be more flexible. And they're interested in hearing about other projects, but those other projects, they would expect those to be, you know, sort of shovel ready or um, from a transmission perspective, they would expect those projects to be on track with what we'd call your appendix J. Um, so your construction program, now that's slightly different to the milestones at distribution that Nikki just mentioned. Um, that's more around the user's responsibilities to, to do things like planning consent, um, but also potentially to make final investment decisions, um, place plant orders. So if you've got a trans- mission offer and you're not a battery and you're thinking of going into this expression of interest take a look at your construction agreement appendix j make sure you're kind of you know on track to hit those dates because that's something that that the esa will be looking for so so does that mean in the expression of interest it's not simply ticking a box saying yes please i want an earlier connection because my assumption is that pretty much everybody everyone's desperate we're getting 20 37 (laughs) connection time frames we know everyone wants to connect earlier right (laughs) But it's not as simple as putting a tick in the box, sending it to them and National Grid getting hundreds of yes pleases. No, no I mean, it, it is, Hugh, but, but they are asking two questions. One, would you like an earlier connection date, of which I think we agree, you know, everyone's going to say yes, or well, most people are going to say yes, please. Um, and yeah. the second one is, would you be prepared to accept a non-firm connection? So some people might say no. I'm absolutely not interested in that. I only want an earlier connection date if I can stay firm. Some people might say, well, ideally, I'd like an earlier connection date and be firm, but I'd accept an earlier connection date and be non-firm. So you're allowed to say both. I would be interested in both. Um, so it, it's a very straightforward form. I don't, you know, don't, don't 
I think the message should be don't not engage with this process because it sounds complicated. It's it's not meant to be complicated. Good. We're going to put a link in the description to the form, which is which is live and working. The ESO's slides from the webinar haven't yet been published, but if we do manage to get them, we'll put it put a link in the description. Cool. Good. So thank you very much, you two. I'm now uh, far more up to speed with this. Thankfully, I, I don't need to fill in uh, one of uh, the ESO's forms, um, but hopefully everyone will. And for those of you out there who think that you know people who might th this might be relevant to, do please ping them a link um, and you can obviously subscribe to the podcast and, and encourage them to and hopefully um, the connectologists here can help even more of you. It just leaves me to say, Nikki, Catherine, thank you very much for that and look forward to seeing you on a, another podcast somewhere near you soon. Thanks. Thanks you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Connectology podcast. If you found it helpful, please share it with any of your colleagues or connections you think may be interested. And please do subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your content. You can find out more about our services at roadnighttaylor.co.uk, link in the description, where you can also sign up to our free Connectology newsletter for more news and thought leadership in network connections. If during this podcast you found yourself wondering what it would be like to have a Road Knight Taylor Connectologist in your life, please do email laura at roadnighttaylor.co.uk to find out how their game-changing skills and insight can change the game for you too. 